Hi, my name is Dr. Dan Sullivan, and in today's video, I want to talk about the relationship between dopamine and ADHD. Dopamine, as you may know, is a neurotransmitter that's produced in the brain and is responsible for feelings of motivation, of goal seeking, and of attention. Dopamine is associated with a narrowed focus on things outside of ourselves, like gaining food or a reward, a mate, or some kind of goal seeking behavior. So the relationship between dopamine and ADHD is that people with ADHD often have lower levels of dopamine in their brain. This is why people with ADHD tend to have higher levels of distractibility. They have a harder time focusing on and keeping attention on that goal in the future because of that lower level of dopamine. So there are several ways of increasing dopamine levels in the brain. Conventionally, people are often given stimulant medications for ADHD, something like Adderall, like Vyvanse or Ritalin, and these medications will increase the levels of dopamine in the brain. There are also non-stimulant medications that can help as well. Aside from medication, setting goals can really help increase motivation and increase levels of dopamine in the brain. The diet can also affect the levels of neurotransmitters in the brain, especially dopamine, so having things like whole foods in the diet, plenty of vegetables, and proteins, especially containing tyrosine, which is a precursor to dopamine, can also help with the levels of dopamine in the brain. Supplements can also play a role. There's been a lot of research around fish oil, especially around modulating levels of dopamine and other neurotransmitters, as well as, as, well as decreasing inflammation in the body, which can affect neurotransmitter production. Vitamin D can also play a role. So having blood levels between around 50 to 80 is optimal for most people. Sunlight can also play a role in dopamine production. And what they found is that five to 10 minutes of sun exposure to your eyes, so basically just getting outside in the sun for five or 10 minutes in the morning can increase levels of dopamine. There are other supplements that help to increase dopamine like tyrosine, which I mentioned is a precursor to dopamine. There's also a supplement called Macuna Purians, which is a little bit more powerful than tyrosine because it contains L-DOPA within it. There's also PEA and phenylalanine, which can help to promote levels of dopamine. And there are cofactors like vitamin B6 that are important for the production of dopamine. Now let's talk a little bit about the breakdown of dopamine. So once we produce dopamine in the brain, we have to break that down. And so there are several enzymes that are responsible for doing this. So one of those is called COMT or catechol o methyl transferase and there's another one called MAO or monoamine oxidase. What these two enzymes do is that once dopamine is produced, they will actually go in and degrade that dopamine. They'll break it down and then they'll recycle it. So if those enzymes are working too fast, you're actually gonna be breaking down your dopamine too quickly, and therefore you're not gonna be having enough left. Or you could break it down too slowly and you'd have excessive levels of dopamine in the brain, and that might lead to difficulty falling asleep or feelings of stress or anxiety. Those two enzymes can be measured by a genetic test, and those are known as SNPs, or single nucleotide polymorphisms. All that means is that people have certain variations in how those enzymes work, genetically speaking, and so some people, like I said, break down dopamine too fast or not fast enough. Now let's talk about things that spike dopamine a little bit too quickly. So there's things like social media, like sugar in the diet, and even illicit drugs, especially like cocaine, which can really increase dopamine levels but all of these can really increase dopamine levels, can spike it, and then can leave you feeling like, feeling like a low afterwards. Because what happens is the higher that we spike dopamine, after that, there is a lower low. So your, act so your baseline dopamine levels <clears throat> become lower. So you actually feel a little bit less motivated and a little bit worse after you have a big spike in dopamine. So you wanna be doing your best to avoid things that drastically spike dopamine because of that leading to lower baseline levels. So things that increase dopamine slowly and more broadly are things like exercise, even cold exposure has been found to increase dopamine levels for an extended period of time, social connection, 
and doing things that require effort like studying or working can increase dopamine a little bit more broadly and over a longer window of time so you don't get that uh, trough after or that decrease in dopamine and you're left feeling worse afterwards. I discuss social media in more depth in another video that I'll link here. One of the things that you can consider doing is a dopamine detox. And so what this is, is essentially a period of time, let's say one to two weeks of eliminating or really reducing those activities that spike dopamine excessively high. So reducing or eliminating your use of social media for a period of time, uh, your consumption of sugary foods or things, substances like chocolate or nicotine, these can spike dopamine levels. And so by going without them for a period of time, you're actually resetting the dopamine system and you're becoming more sensitized to that dopamine. So I know this was a lot of information, but I hope you gained some value and you're able to understand better the relationship between dopamine and ADHD, and also some tools around how to modulate dopamine and how to increase the effectiveness of the dopamine that you have.